Ciao bella, ciao tutti, ciao Italia. Diodato won San Remo, surprising a lot of people, beating a lot of fan favorites. His song Fai Rumore literally means make noise, but it's more elegant according to Italians. It's more like manifest yourself, let yourself be heard, let yourself be known. But you cannot always translate fine art. In any case, should we review the song? <laughs> Let's, Let's do this. Oh, you guys, Italy, 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 you have me floored. I'm gonna be honest, when this won, I really, really liked it, but it was only after the COVID-19 pandemic that I really, really loved it. I think the song's taken on a whole new meaning. When you see people in isolation, in quarantine, on their balconies singing this at a time and in a country that has really, really had to fight through this, you just feel something on a whole new level. But even putting that to the side, he sounds amazing. At San Remo, he sounded amazing. He doesn't need staging. Just let the man stand there and hit those notes. The verses, they really draw me in. Quiet, chatty, but then he belts it out in that chorus. And you want to what? You want to manifest yourself. You want to fi rumore yourself, okay? You know what I think? that I shouldn't be thinking, that if I think about it, then I'm an animal. And if I think about you, you're a soul. This is poetry. Dante Alighieri for a new generation, but don't put me in Inferno, honey. Take me to Paradiso. This song is just so elegant, so classy. The music video, paired back. He's walking out of like an orange mist. He manifests himself, he, he firumores himself, and it's just on point. He's contending with the unbearable silence at the end of a love story. I see this on WooBeeBlogs.com, it must be true. What I'm trying to say to you is this song is next level. I liked it a lot before, but now I think this would have been the winner of Eurovision if Eurovision had taken place amid this situation. I think this just gives me all the feels. It's clearly giving Italians all the feels. And I think he's, you know, over the course of the few months we've had this song justified his win. Not that anyone has to justify their win, but the fact that this song has become so much more than a song makes it a rightful winner to me, Ed. Do you know what? I'm completely with you. I am, I'm, my first choice of song is not a ballad. But this really, really gets you. When I was watching all the, the finalists for San Remo and noting down my favourites, this came out on top and it was not the song that I wanted to win and go to Eurovision. I don't think it is a Eurovision song, but it was the one that I gave the highest rank. And you know what? It just is so emotional. When the first chorus comes, it is just stripped back and you just you just feel it inside you. Um I think also it would have lent itself to some very strong staging. Given the situation in Italy, you know, they could have played on that very well. And, you know, after the story about people singing it on their balconies, it really gets you. And it is a love song about a breakup. It's not about coronavirus or whatever. But when you put two and two together, the, the sheer emotion and power of this really well-written ballad and well-performed ballad with something that has been so evident in the world right now, it just evokes so much emotion. And, you know, there's a reason why Italy always does so well in Eurovision, and that is because they stick to their guns. They don't write Eurovision songs. They write good songs and send them to Eurovision, and the impact is incredible. So for me, this was my favourite ballad of the year, and... I absolutely love it. Um, so, I I really look forward to Italy's entries. Um, I really got into San Remo this year. Uh, I watched a lot of it, had a lot of favourites. Unfortunately, Fire More was not one of them. Um, I think it has grown on me slightly in recent weeks, having, you know, 
again, seen it being sung by the locals from the balconies. It, it does take on a new meaning. But for me, I've really struggled with the emotional connection here that I have with other Italian entries. Um, he says, you know, make noise. And for me, the chorus is just a bit too much of a wall of sound. I don't, I don't hear the texture um, that I want to, that I can connect to. It just sort of comes at you, hits me, and it's not, it's not jarring, but I haven't been able to dig into it and connect with the lyrics and the melody in the same way that I did so with, say, Marco Mignoni in 2013. Um, yeah, I think this is just not one for me, unfortunately. Um, I, I do kind of see why a lot of people will enjoy it, but hopefully Italy will be one of my favourites again next year. I have to say that when Sanremo was going on, I had many other favourites as well. I I liked Elodie, I liked the nuclear penguins. And this kind of passed me by. Um, it won, I thought it was very nice. I could see that it made Italians emotional, but I didn't connect with it because I didn't know the meaning behind it or get the feeling. And with Italy and San Remo, the San Remo staging doesn't lend itself to telling you what the song is about because it's just a person on the stage. But now, since this coronavirus pandemic... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Move to <sweetie. laughs> okay. The cat wants to be in. Yes. Um... But since the corona pandemic, it's taken on, I think for everyone who follows Eurovision closely, this is the one song that's taken on a whole lot of meaning and symbolism. And especially those scenes with the people singing on the balcony, that it's very hard not to be moved when you hear that song. And it wouldn't have had the same effect if it had been people singing Ringo Starr. Um, People wouldn't have been getting teary-eyed over that. So it's kind of a song that's, it's the right place and right time for it right now. And as a result of everything that's going on, I'm getting the emotions and I'm kind of starting to connect with it because I'm getting it now. And I think at your vision, if your vision was happening now, that it would have the same Im- impact on everybody watching that. People say that it should be just about the song and it's not politics and all that, but this is technically isn't politics, but the outside world does have an impact on how people view songs and how you interact with music. And depending on your environment, you'll have different connections. And right now, Fai Remori is definitely one of my favourites, purely based on everything that's going around happening in the world right now. Amen, hallelujah. Well said. Music is born of a time. It's born of a place. And these are the times we're in, and that's the place he is in. I think it's wonderful. Um, I want to read a comment on weeweblogs.com. This is from Mio. She says, well, and I think this was written before Eurovision was cancelled. Yes, I believe he will, yeah. Yes, I believe he will create a special moment, open, vulnerable, tender, and passionate. It is a different song, but thematically and dynamically, it reminds me of Moli Va, which was, of, which was, of course, another Eurovision winner, which kind of stirred a lot of emotions in a lot of people. I'm seeing a lot of comparisons to Moli Va, not musically, but in terms of the impact it could have. In any case, let's go around and give our scores out of 10, along with an explanation, also noting that these scores were submitted prior to Eurovision being cancelled. Ed? For me, it's an 8.5. It really is such a strong ballad. It, it evokes emotions from the first chorus to the last chorus. And I do honestly believe that this could have won. Given the situation, it could have been, you know, Jamala in 2016. Did she have the best song? No. But did she have the right song at the right time that caused the most impact on the viewers? Yes, she did. And I believe that this song did as well. This is not me doing it down as a song. It is an excellent song. But given the situation as well, it just comes together and it really, really evokes very strong emotions in me. I love it. Ciao bello. I gave this a five and a half. Um, I'm quite happy for, to, be, to know that I'm in the minority here. 
Um, I'm sure it would have done very well. Um, it's just for some for some reason that I haven't been able to hit sort of put my finger on yet. It's just it's just not connected for me. I think Italy would have safely maintained its streak of top 10 performances and this would definitely be pushing for the win and if everything had fallen into place with the right narrative, the right staging and everything else, this could have pushed for the win and I am giving it an 8.5. My grievance with Italy at Eurovision in recent years has always been about staging. It's never really been about the song. For instance, Francesco Gabbani, that's the best example of something that kind of deflated when it hit the big stage at Eurovision. Imma Morone, you'll recall, similar situation. In any case, with this song, you didn't need staging. You really didn't. You just needed, I don't know, a wall with some colors on it, and he would have absolutely killed it. To me, this is the closest thing to perfection we have at Eurovision 2020. To me, this is one of the frontrunners to win Eurovision 2020 in my headspace where it's still happening. I think this song I don't know, this is a song for the times. This is so beyond Eurovision, and it deserves recognition for that. This is one of only two perfect tens I am awarding in 2020, y'all. Perfect ten, perfection, dia, da, da, okay? I also love that, like, I feel like at the right angle, I kind of look like him. Just kidding. (laughs) In any case, we are not the only really bloggers. There are dozens of them all over the world, and they have also given scores. And when we take a global average across everyone, It is 6.95, so knocking on a 7. And we always say anything at a 7 is quite good because we have so many people from so many different age groups and nationalities and backgrounds that it's hard to have a number go above that. So I'd like to see it higher, but well done. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Is it Grazie Mille from you to Italy? Do you think this could have won? Are you saying Mamma Mia? Are you saying Ciao Bella? Shout it out below on WeWeBlogs.com. Don't forget to give us a like down there. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when our next WeWe Jury videos are coming out. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at WeWeBlogs. And we will see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.